So, you know, you'll have a 5 a.m. workout, you know, workout time that morning. And then after the 5 a.m. workout, you'll go to class. And then you, like, in the middle of the day, once your classes are done, you'll have, you know, some people have their schedule where you don't have any classes after practice, but sometimes you have a night class. Mm-hmm. But you got to understand, after practice, you're beat. After weight <laughs> room, you might have the, you know, sway trainers play with us. We didn't. <laughs> yeah. God forbid you have an injury, so you have to go to treatment, and then you have to go to class, and then it was a business outside of a business, you know, a business yeah. that you were you were never compensated for. <laughs> right? No, absolutely. The only compensate the only compensation you really get is the chance to be in the NFL. Yeah. You didn't you didn't have a contract with Nike, but you wore it on TV. You know. Yeah. I mean, it was it's it was a business, man, and it's tough. So- what do you feel, Damian? What do you feel now about like the the legislation that DeSantis just the governor just passed about now college athletes in the state of Florida getting paid now for their likeness? Ten years too late. <laughs> I mean, it ain't. I mean, it's never because at the end of the day, once like once that movement starts, now everyone's gonna start like, hey, okay, we did this yeah. for X amount of years, and now we need some compensation. Correct. Yeah, like even, yeah, I I think that'll get brought up. I think I think former players be like, hey, look, we've been doing this. How come we're not getting compensated? Yeah. Right. Just like the, I mean, the NCAA, the NCAA game, they gave out pennies, man. Yeah. Oh, was, yeah. They gave us pennies for that. But you know, like NFL Madden, Madden pays you. <laughs> I, yeah. I'll do anything. Wow. I'll, I'll do Madden again. You know, <laughs> but yeah. you know it's. It's something like, you know, it's pay the people for what they do. You know, yeah, if right. you do so, if you're good at something, don't ever do it for free. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. The other day, uh, Brad Kaya tweeted a picture of like a full rack of his number 15 jersey. You know, I, I'm not sure if it's a recent picture, if he took it back, uh, you know, when he was a, a college freshman and, and our starting quarterback. But, uh, you know, he, he posted that picture and was like, man, what I would do for 1% of, of these sales, you know, it probably would have been a hefty chunk of change, man. Facts. And then you got to think about it, bro. The number 20, like, bro, <laughs> I wore 20 after Ed Weed. So yeah. and then yeah. they didn't have names on the back of the jersey. So, like, even at the end that of the day. That was Randy for you. Listen. That was Coach Shannon for you. He's like, mm-hmm. you guys aren't even putting names on your jersey. <laughs> yeah, I'm yeah, like, man. what are you doing, man? Like, man, oh. that, he had to change that, man. One, bro, I swear, we played Virginia. We got blew out. This last game of the, yeah. of the Orange D, I was, I was so frustrated. 2007, bro. trust me, I was there. <laughs> I was upset. But the craziest thing ever, bro, as a hurricane was, we was walking back into the locker room and we heard a fan say, "Hey, Randy." Put the effing names on the back of the jersey so we can tell who effing sucks. Bro, I was like, yo. Oh, my gosh. That's great. And I was just like, yo. And I was like, I would, I can never be that. I, would, I vowed to be, not to be that guy that sucks. Yeah. That was that was like, yo, I can. Because, you know, bro, they, they all they see is the number on your jersey at the end of the day. The yeah. number and it, the name, and they remember the number and the name because you wear that helmet the whole game. Yeah. yeah. So Well, for me, I don't care if you didn't have a number, I mean, a name on the back. Because, like, obviously, if you're a true fan, you know who wears what number. You right. know what I mean? It's not like one of these guys that buys a ticket, you know, oh, let me just go to a UM game, and I'll just go sit in the stands and watch it. But, like, no, nah, yeah, that was rough. You know, there was two things that bothered me over the last probably – uh, probably 12, you know, 10, 12 years is one was that, that, you know, Randy Shannon stripped the names off of the players. And I just, I never understood that. And this is a couple years after UD was like Al Golden, right? Bless his heart. I, I think he's a nice guy, but he wore this orange tie every week, you know, on the sideline. The man never had a University of Miami logo anywhere on him. Like you're the head coach of the University of Miami. Like at least your tie could have had a U on it or your yeah. polo could have like, like those are two things that have bothered me about coaches over the last 12 yeah. years. Like, represent. Like, you know, rep, let the kids – the kids are playing, right? You guys are yeah. playing. Like, put your name out there. We want to know who it is. You know, and then the golden thing, not wearing, like, a U there on game day, it bothered me. Yeah. I, I never even thought about that, but uh, you're right about Coach Golden. I never uh, I never noticed that he, he wasn't wearing a U anywhere, but that's that's right. 
crazy, right? I mean, yeah. I mean, I look, I mean, I, I can't, I don't, I, I never was coached by him. So my brother yeah, yeah. played under him for a minute. Trust me, I know. <laughs> but I mean, it's a lot of things, you know, it's hard to tell somebody to stand behind you if you're not even standing you ain't behind wearing it. you. You know, it, it. it takes a real man to wear the University of Miami orange and green, but it takes yeah. an even realer man to put that you on him. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely, you know, man. It, uh, that's a different statement. The University of Miami is a different statement, man. Being, yeah. it's only two type of people in the world. Those who are kings and those who <laughs> want to be kings. I love so if yeah. you're a true king, you wear that you proudly. Yeah. So yeah. As, I blame that on the administration of the University of Miami for hiring a guy that really didn't believe in the University of Miami itself. Yeah. I don't care. Oh, he who literally he was. sold. He literally sold them a crock of crap. He came in there with his <laughs> seven pillars of success or whatever he came in with there, and they literally, man, like he's like Joe Salesman from New Jersey, man. He literally came in there and sold them. Like, he sold Eskimos ice, bro. And they but just I don't, bit it. <laughs> I wouldn't just blame. I wouldn't just blame it all on Al, though. You know. Because at the oh, end of the no. day, you're not putting Al out there to catch no balls. He doesn't have to catch no. the ball. He doesn't have to run the ball. So at the end of the day, it falls on us, the players, to actually Correct. do what he tells us to do. And he did a great job at Temple. He One did. of the players that came out um, that came from under him was uh, Bernard Pierce, and he was an awesome running back. Yeah. But at the same time, you you got to find a coach that fits the culture and Correct. fits the yeah. students, athletes down at the University of Miami. Manny, right now, he fits it. Mm -hmm. He's the perfect guy for the job. He's doing a whole reconstruction, transformation of the University of Miami that is well needed because what we are losing now is the interest of the kids. Like, kids aren't really interested as they were in football, and it started when I got there. Yeah. Like, I started seeing the love for football being stripped from the kids. And you got to find a way to bring the love back. And he did it by bringing the turnover chain. Kids yeah. go wild just for the turnover chain. You got to yeah. find a, a way to intrigue these kids these days because their attention spans are so short. Right. Yeah. So I. Well, I, you know, I brought. I, go ahead, Jordan. I'm sorry. I was just going to say, I, I have a question for what you just said. Uh, you know, you said that you could see uh, like the love of football being stripped from from some of the guys. I mean, do you want to expound on that? Do you have any ideas of what was causing that? I mean, it isn't what it isn't what's causing it. It's just the world right now. Everything is so tech sound. You like back in the day, like in order to really get out of the hood, what did you have to do? You had to have a, a talent, do something that was worth right. getting paid for. If I wanted to get out, I had to play football. I wasn't. I'm not a. I'm not an engineer. You know, I'm not a doctor. I'm not somebody that can just sit in class for years to get a degree in being a doctor. That's not me. I would be fooling Tell myself him, to say I'm going to be a lawyer. <laughs> yeah. I would be fooling myself to, to say, okay, I'm going to sit and do five more years to become an attorney and then take another test and pass this test, you know, and then hope that I can be a high paid attorney. That's not right. me. That wasn't my route. So I think that right now it's just the, the technology is changing. You know, I had, I recently, while I was coaching that program, I had a kid quit. He told me, uh, he was an old lineman, told me, Coach, I don't want to play football no more because I'm just going to do YouTube. I'm going to cut grass on YouTube. (laughs) Wow. You know, there's so many ways, so many avenues right now to actually get paid and not have to do that much work. Absolutely. Absolutely. You're right. I mean, look, look at Jordan. Jordan's doing a podcast. You know, I, mean, <laughs> I ain't getting paid yet. Yeah, doing a, doing a podcast. It's on its way, you know. It's just find, right. find what you do, you know. Yeah. Find what you do and do it well. Yeah, yeah man. I, I mean, that's great insight, though. I, I never really thought about it that way, but I mean, that totally makes sense, you know. Damian, um, being a running, being a running back at university, being a running back at the University of Miami. Can you, can you list your top three running back all time at University of Miami? Top three of all time yeah. University of Miami. And, and, Ooh, and not based on, on that. <laughs> Correct. I'm talking about Damian Barry, number twenty, you know, former starting running back at the University of Miami. Give me your top three running backs that that, that came through Miami. You know, I would be wrong not to say Ed. I mean I'm excusing Edgerin. Ooh, top three. Oh wow. 
Okay, so I'm gonna do I'm gonna do edge. I'm gonna do um shoot ooh, Willis. <laughs> uh can I can I do at least five? Give me five. <laughs> Go for it. Give me Go five. Give me five. Okay, I'll do five. I would say edge. I would have to say Frank, Willis, um, Lamar, and baby J. So, and listen, so I love Javar James, uh, man, like, he was just different. Like, you know, they, I mean, he wasn't the fastest guy, you know, um, but man, I, I love the way he ran. Um, Javar, I, I, I would have thought you would have probably threw Duke in there just because of, you know, the records and the stats. Uh-huh. Um, yeah, but, I mean, Duke had it. I mean, it was Duke's team. So, I mean, it wasn't. It wasn't it wasn't like what I had to go through or Correct. you know Lamar or what what um what Javaris went through. If we're getting the ball a hundred times a game, hell Correct. yeah, we get You're those stats. Yeah, yeah. No, absolutely. You know? Absolutely. And not, uh-uh. he's a great athlete. Hell yeah. Duke is a great runner. But he didn't he didn't come in with the with the guys like we had, you know? And he had so a you, game you, plan just for Duke. Right. And so you mentioned somebody and if Jordan, if you don't mind, I'll just t- I'll touch on this real quick. Is, yeah, go for it. Like you said, Frank Gore, like look at Frank Gore as a third all time leading rusher in the NFL history, who at 37 years old is literally still playing running back in the NFL. <laughs> like th- th- that just blows me away because, you know, like the running back, the running back like tenure at the NFL is probably on an average of what, three, four years. Would you think that that's an right. accurate assessment? Right. Man, you're talking yeah, somebody in there for 17 years. You're absolutely right, bro. You're absolutely and, right. And one of the most humblest guys you will ever meet in your life. Oh yeah. Like, gosh, man, yeah, that, that's just- what makes the you special. You know, look at Edge. Edge going into the Hall of Fame this year. He should have been in there years earlier, but he's finally getting into the Hall of Fame. Jimmy Johnson going into the Hall of Fame. You know, look at the next couple of years. Hopefully, Vince Wolfork, Hall of yeah. Fame. Andre Johnson, Hall of Fame. Frank Gore, whenever he finally decides to retire in five more years, the Hall of Fame. Like, it's, it's amazing to see what the University of Miami, what they produce and what they put out. And not just on the field, but off the field, too, man. Mm-hmm. Like they have great guys in the community giving back. Talk about yourself going, you know, going back to coach high school football yeah. to put in the work and teach younger kids. Hey, look, I've been here. I've, I've done this. You know, trust me. Watch what I do. This, this is what the mistakes that I've made. Don't make these same mistakes, mm-hmm. you know. So it's empowering to see, you know, someone like yourself and other people at the University of Miami giving back into the community, you know. So I appreciate you doing that, bro. Yeah, man. It's it's it's. It's, it needs to be done, you know, and done the right way. I mean, I'm sick of the coaches, you know, the half-assed coaches, you know. Yeah. You can't you can't do that to kids, man. People just coaching for a paycheck, you know. Mm-hmm. And I and I was uh, actually talking to um, one of the guys, one of my old friends. Um, I was talking to Brandon Harris, and um, oh, I was telling him, number one, yeah, <laughs> yeah. And I was telling him he was because he was like, bro, because he always he you know he's at FSU now. He yeah. always invites me to the um, to the coaching clinics and and stuff like that. And I was like, bro, I was like, bro, guys, like you know, it's a difference. Like guys like me and you know, we don't we have to go the long route. Like you know, coach high school, then build their way up to you know, yeah. what I'm saying to college. And then you know, some people have like that end. You know, have a best friend that's that so happen becomes a coach, and then they. They get there. They pull team. you in. Yeah. So I was like, bro, like, and I don't mind going the long route. Like, I've been going the long route my whole entire life. So if it's for me, it's for me. If it's not, it's not, you know? So I'm just going to continue to pour into the lives of the younger community, the younger kids, and, you know, and continue to build them up, you know, until that day comes where I'm a college coach or, you know, potentially an NFL coach. But, if that's not my route, that's not my route, you know? But at least you can use your platform to put yourself out there. Obviously, you played college ball. You played in NFL. You know, so, yeah. So, so what? You got to start at the bottom to work your way up. Is that your long-term goal is to try to coach in, coach in college and then potentially coach maybe at, at the NFL level? 
Oh, man, I 